Welcome to the first video in a series of four where we'll be exploring how to use different LLMs in What's an XAI Flows Engine. With Flows Engine, you can build AI flows using a declarative flow language, deploy them using a CLI, and then consume those flows using the Python or JavaScript as the case. In this video, I'll be showing how you can use a different model in each of your requests. As a developer, you might know that it's pretty hard to find the best model out there. You can see updates on LinkedIn or Twitter almost every day about people claiming they have the best and brightest model out there. But you actually want to test if these models will fit your use case. And for this, you need to have one unified way to call these different models without having to use a different SDK or different API endpoint every time. So with Flows Engine, you can substitute one model with the other as easy as creating one line of code that you need to change every time. So if you want to use IBM Granite first and then the Llama model next, or maybe you want to go from uh, Llama or Granite to Mistral. With Flows Engine, you can do all of this. And in this series of four videos, I'll be showing you how you can do this. In this first video, we'll be setting up the Groundworks. We'll be setting up Flows Engine, and you'll learn how to use the SDK to send a request to your Flows Engine endpoint. In the upcoming videos, we'll be deep diving into different LLM families. So we'll start with IBM Granite, then we go to Llama from Meta, and finally, we'll be exploring Mistral. Before you're able to build out flows, you need to sign up for what's an XAI flows engine. Signing up can be done via the website and it's completely free. You'll get access to models running in what's an XAI and even a vector database in case you're trying to build a RAG application. From the documentation, you're able to find the installation page. In here, you can download the latest version of the CLI after signing in. You can install it by running a pip install and then double check you have it installed by running the wxflows version command. After installing, there's one other thing you should do. You should link the CLI to your Watson XAI Flows Engine account. And you can do this by following the steps on this authentication page. It should be straightforward because you can find all your credentials right here in the dashboard. So after installing the CLI, you can go into VS Code and start a new project. What I'm going to do, I'm going to run the command wxflows in it. And this will help me to set up a new project. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pass it an endpoint name, uh, just so I'll be certain that my endpoint name is as I like it to see. And I can call my endpoint uh, wxflows dash genai slash lm prompts. So this should set up a new what's an xflows project with the endpoint name what's an xflows genai slash lm prompts. So this command will generate two files. It will generate a toml file, which includes my endpoint name, and then it includes a list of flows. As I've initialized a new project, there will be no flows to start with. And also it generates a environment.sample file. What you can do here, you can copy it into a new file called .environment, and you need to set the watsonx underscore host to shared. So this will ensure that you're using the shared Watson XAI instance that's provided for you in a free plan. This means that you don't need to set up your own Watson XAI account and paste credentials right here. Of course, you are able to use this system with your own Watson XAI instance. If you want to do that, then make sure to head over to our documentation. I'll be going back to my TOML file, and in here I'm going to paste my first flow. And actually what I've done, I already copy pasted this uh, from a different project. Uh, so let me go in here and replace this with a new line. I can also do multi lines in here, as you see, and then I'll be pasting this flow. And this is a text completion flow. So let's look at it. Uh, as you can see, it's called text completion and it consists of two steps. There is the templated prompt step, which takes my prompt template. And there is a question variable here that uh, will be filled automatically based on how you send your request to the flow. And then there's also a completion step. In this completion step, I'm passing a model and I'm also passing a set of parameters. So whenever I invoke the flow called text completion, I can pass a value for question, model, and parameters. And these will then be passed on to the correct steps. This is the only thing you need in your TOML file for now. Uh, make sure that the AI engine is set to Watson X because we'll be using models from Watson X today. Then the next thing I should do after saving my TOML file, 
I'm making sure I've set this Watson X host to shared. So I'm using the shared instance and I don't need to set up my own Watson X account. I can run the command WX flows deploy. What this will do, this will deploy my flows to a live endpoint. And then I can use this live endpoint together with the SDK, or I can just go to the HTTPS endpoint in a tool like Postman and then send my request through there. The endpoint will be printed in your terminal. You can see it only took a couple of seconds. And then it also mentions the flow it deployed. So after setting this up, I can actually go over to the SDK and set up a new project. So what I've done, I've set up a new JavaScript project. Uh, as you can see, I've called it wxflows LLM prompts. Uh, and there is one dependency, which is the wxflows SDK for JavaScript. There also is an SDK for Python, but today I'll be using the JavaScript SDK. I've created one file called index.js. Um, as you can see here, you need to insert your own uh, credentials. So this is your endpoint, which is printed in your terminal. And then you need your API key. And you can get your API key by going into the dashboard, or you can run the command wxflows who am I, API key. And then once you press enter, it will print your API key in the terminal. I'm not going to do this because I'm not looking to share my API key with you, but you can do this yourself on your own machine. If we look at the file, we can see there is a connection made with my endpoint using my API key and endpoint URL. It will look at the schema. So this schema contains all your flows. And then finally, it allows you to send a flow request using the name of the flow and then also a question. So this is more or less my prompt. It's important that the text completion name matches with what you have in your WXflows TOML file. So let's look at my question. I've wrote down a simple prompt that says, take the role of a personal travel assistant and give me recommendations for a summer holiday for a family of five. I could be more descriptive. I could add a country I'd like to visit or maybe the ages of all the people in the family, but I didn't do all of that. Instead, I'm just going to use this very simple prompt. If I scroll a bit down, you can see that I Invoke my flow here by running model.flow. I passed my schema, so all the flows that I have available. I set the flow name to text completion because this is the flow we just created in the TOML file. And then I set the model to IBM Granite 13B chat. And I'm going to substitute this model with a different one later on. I also didn't set a temperature, uh, but for example, I can set a temperature to temperature to oil. 0.8, like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear my terminal. I'm going to make sure that I move into the uh, directory where I have my index.js file. So in case you didn't notice, I put this in a separate directory called app. And from here, I can run node index.js. So once I execute this, it should send a request to my endpoint with my flows. in the question, the name of the prompt, uh, name of the model, sorry and also the temperature and max new tokens. And then it should output the response from the LLM, which in this case is IBM Granite 13B chat. So I'm running this and this should only take a small amount of time and it should print the response right here in my terminal. So let's have a look at my response. As you can see, it came up with different destinations, Orlando, Florida, San Diego, in California, Hawaii, uh, Cancun, and Mexico. Personally, I can really recommend going to uh, Universal Studios in Florida. I've been there a couple of years ago, and it's a great place to go if you like Harry Potter. So this is my response. I can change my prompt in order to make it more concise or add the countries I'd like to visit or maybe the ages of every person in the family. Uh, but instead, I can also just change the model. As you see here, we're using IBM Granite 13B chat. Let's substitute this with a different model. As mentioned, you can use all the models that are available in Watson XAI. So let's have a look at the documentation for Watson XAI and pick a different model. The documentation for Watson XAI mentions all the model IDs that you can use. If you scroll down here, you can see that we find the previous model we used, so IBM Granite 13B chat, 
Uh, let's scroll down a bit more and let's find the llama models. Um, over here, you can see that we can take one of the llama models. For example, let's take the llama 3 8b instruct. There is a new llama 3.1 model out, but I'm not using it today in this video. I'll be using it in one of the follow up videos where we deep dive into using the llama family. So back in VS Code, I'm going to change my IBM Granite model into the Llama 3 8B instruct model. I'm going to save this and from my terminal, I can run the node index.js command again. And this time it should generate a response using a different model. So we should see some differences in our answer. And as you can see, let me make my terminal a bit bigger. You can see the answer is very different. So this time it's recommending places in Europe, also in the UK and even Australia. In the follow-up videos, I'll be exploring how you can get the most out of all these different models because each model will require a slightly different prompt, will require different settings for temperature or also decoding method, which is another parameter that you can set. For example, we can set this to greedy. And what all of this means is something I'll explain in the next video in this series where we'll be looking at IBM Granite. And that's it. In just under 10 minutes, we looked at how to use Flows Engine for different models. And as mentioned, you can use this with any model that's available on watsonx.ai. In the upcoming video, we'll be deep diving into IBM Granite. And the video after that will be about Llama. And finally, we'll be doing a video about using Mistral. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video so you'll be updated when the next one drops. Also, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section or find our Discord channel for which you can find the link right here in the description.